There you are. Hey! <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Technology, while often our friend, can be extremely frustrating. I feel like every time I start one of these things, there's like something where I'm like, oh God, what's happening? But good, glad we got you. How are you? I think the hardest thing sometimes is just connecting. So woo, we did it. We did it. We're yeah. Step one. Uh, are you, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling golden? Oh, I can't even see my, I got my golden girls shirt. Oh, these girls are feeling I golden. Love, it. I love, <laughs> love me some golden girls. How are you today? What's going on in your world? Oh, you know what? I'm so good. Thank you for asking. So um, yesterday was kind of a big day. I had to have this like medical kind of procedure test done. And I didn't realize it was weighing on me quite heavily. But I found out that no tumor, all good. No uh, cancer, all good. And we just closed on a house. So we're going to be new homeowners. Wow. So a lot. That's a lot. That is a like lot. a lot. In one day. <laughs> Normally people are like, ah, oh, you know, not much. Just uh, went on a walk this morning, fed the dog. But yeah, that's, that's a handful. That's a good one. Um, so tell me where this house, what, where is this? Uh, I assume you've been a homeowner in the past. You, you just moved to a new home or what's, uh, what's the deal? So I, um, and I just returned back from my very first like two day, two and a half day event. So I've held in-person events that are like a day long, but this was like an official two and a half day long experience. And so yeah, that on top of everything. Um, yeah, we, we, I'm originally, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm originally from Texas. Oh yeah. I yeah. can hear it. And, um, but I moved and lived in Los Angeles for 31 years and we just moved back to the Dallas area cause my whole family's still here. And so We've been renting a house until we could find um, a place to live, and we finally found out it happened pretty quick. And so, yeah, nice. official. We are well, congrats. That's, a, that's an amazing feeling, I'm sure, anybody on here that's, you know, got their own home. I mean, just the, the moving in part is just the process of, you know, finding it, buying it, closing on it, and then just actually getting in. There's, like, no better feeling, I feel like, because yeah. it's just, like, this huge weight is lifted. Then you get to decorate and do all that other fun stuff. And it, it becomes kind of a lifelong project as, as I like to say, you know, it's not like you move in and it's like, okay, it's done. And, and if it was that way, it wouldn't really be that fun and exciting because it would get whatever's new gets old pretty quickly. So at around here, I don't know how you guys have done it in the past, but we like to continually update, you know, just little things around the house, add new plants to the yard, you know, so it feels fresh and new. Constantly. Oh, I'm so excited for that. And one of the things that a big dream is what I want to do is um, turn one of the garages into my own recording studio, because this is where I record now, like my podcast in this tiny little room. And I'm like, it would be so cool to have a place that I could actually invite a guest over and we can sit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, one thing when you said that, I just thought about, God, I'm jealous of your acoustics. So the smaller the room, the better the acoustics for sure. Oh, I, I'm, I'm my, in a larger room. What's that? I started in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much smaller than that. I can imagine that you probably sounded like you just had the golden, the golden voice in there. There's uh, Got a coat closet that is just magical for making it better. I but. bet. Because I'm my, this room, I'm actually having the opposite problem. This room's a little bit big, and I'm like, do I have to get like soundproofing stuff around? So I may, I actually may move into my closet. So we may be going in the opposite direction. <laughs> but I do, I do get like I have a table behind me. I, I could have guests, but I, I always do my guests this way. So I don't really need it, but I could see for somebody else. Well, let's get into it. Um, obviously you had, there's, there's this, let's get into your story. So, you know, you're, you're obviously uh, a big part of who you are is you had this, this tragedy and you were able to turn it into a triumph. Uh, I want you to tell people about it. And, but before you do, I just want to kind of point out like almost every guest that I have, I feel like it's been not only like a small tragedy that's happened, but a pretty big one or a pretty big rock bottom moment in people's lives to where, it has sparked something that has then said, you know, there's, I feel like there is something in the human 
the human brain, the human DNA, whatever you, our primal instincts, whatever you want to call it, where it's like when we're when we're put up to the wall, it's you that either fight or flight, and some people just have that like I am going to go 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 and push through this, and this isn't going to beat me. And clearly, you're one of those people. So I'd like to you to share your story, and hopefully, people listening can figure out if they're going through their own tragedy or have had one and still struggling how to be able to turn it into a positive as well. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to go live. Um, I mean, I just really appreciate getting to connect with you and with, with your audience, so thank you. And yeah, I think that resilient people know when something bad happens, a real catastrophe or just a bad day, it's time, it's time to sink or swim. And, um, you know, I, it's actually been 12 years ago was probably one of the hardest times, the hardest time of my life when, you know, I had a big career. I was in you know, the fitness industry. I had trainers that worked for me. I was sponsored by Nike. Things were good. I was like, I am finally living the California dream, you know, doing infomercials and, and loved my life. And I was coming home from work and I had just ran 11 miles in my best time. And running was my drug of choice. That's what I did for anxiety. Similar. That's my wife. Same thing. Running's, I, I, running's her but, drug of choice. Yeah, I mean, it, there's just that that was my therapy and um, coming home from work on my motorcycle. I uh, had an SUV shoot out of a parking lot and they T boned me. So I got thrown 30 feet and was just sliding across the asphalt. And I remember when I first stopped, I looked down at my leg only once because it's crazy when you look down and you see your body completely you know, my leg was crumbled to pieces. My, ah. I didn't know it at the time, but my femoral artery had been severed. So there was blood everywhere. And, you know, I am so blessed and had my guardian angels working overtime because there was a guy that came over and right away he made a tourniquet around my leg. So he saved my life. The paramedics were right down the street. They heard the accident. So before they even got the call, they were running to me. Wow. And so I got taken to the hospital and uh, I was put in induced coma because my organs, I'd lost so much blood and they could not control my pain. And so they, you know, put me in induced coma. And the first thing that I learned when I woke up out of a coma was that I had a 1% chance of saving my leg that they were, it was basically like a war wound and they needed to amputate. Oh and, when I heard that 1% chance, I was like, oh, well, then, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. So there's a the number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I, it took a lot of uh, grit, a lot of prayers. And uh, by the grace of God, we found a doctor who um, did 34 surgeries in total and saved my leg. And that was really difficult to, you know, go through surgery and a day of recovery and surgery and a wow. day of recovery. And then sometimes, you know, I'd be out of the hospital and have to go back into the hospital for two weeks. And, but the hardest thing actually was when, as a result of the accident, I was diagnosed with complex regional pain syndrome, which leaves you in constant chronic pain. So many of us have been hit by something, especially yeah. in this past couple of years. Right. You know, for me, you know, we had $2.9 million worth of medical expenses. Um, I lost my career. Uh, I lost my confidence to look down at my leg that they saved, but is now deformed and gives me pain. I really had to switch my mindset, come up with new tools because um, I can't run anymore. And so I had to focus on things that I can't do instead. Um, and I feel like resilience is a superpower and we all have it. We just have to learn how to tap into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we just gotta, you know, when, when bad things happen or things don't go as planned, that there are ways, there are things that you can have set in place and things that I do every single day that allow me to thrive and build on joy, um, even though I have pain, but to build upon the joy. I mean, that's, uh, that's it. I mean, that's, that's kind of, 
everything, you know, what you just said in terms of, you know, simplifying what life is about. I think it's, it's a couple of different things, but one of them is to ABG always be growing, which is what you are basically doing because, you know, if you had let that just basically a lot of people will fall into a depression and you said, you mentioned everybody has it in them. I agree. I think everybody does have it, have the ability, but not everybody gets to the point where they understand how to do it and gets that help that they need or that spark that gets them, you know, going in the right direction. And, and I can already tell just in speaking with you for a short period, I break people down into two different categories. You're either a growth owner or a fixed victim. And, and as a growth owner, you use words like I haven't yet. You're telling me there's a chance that even if it's 1%, you know, but that sort of like, optimism of look i know i've got everything within me to kick ass and take names i've got a life ahead of me and i'm going to figure out a way around these obstacles to get there versus your fixed victim who says poor me you know my brain is broken or my leg is broken whatever it is you know I, I, there's nothing i can do about it why even bother trying you know maybe one day i'll hit the lottery and hopefully you know I get as much sympathy from people as possible, which is the worst way to go through life because then you're just constantly in this state of, you know, low energy and feeling sorry for yourself and hoping for an outside force to, to spark something. Whereas, you know, the growth owner, it's no, it's in me and I'm the only one that can do it and we're going to get through it and we're going to do this. And things happen to everybody, right? With you, it's your leg, you know, People listening, there's, I can guarantee if everybody sits and stops for a second and says, what was my biggest tragedy? You know, was, there was that moment where it was like push comes to shove. And so if there are people out there that are still kind of maybe haven't quite bounced back from it, I guess I'd ask you, you know, what are some of your top or like, what did you do and, and what would you recommend to people to be able to find that space and be able to move forward? Oh, well, you, you said that so well. I love the way that you explain things. And, you know, I think there was a time when I started falling into that victim mentality and I was having, you know, a little pity party and, you know, looking down at my leg and I hated myself. I hated the way that, you know, that I was deformed, that my leg gave me pain and hate's a four letter word in our family that I really hated it. And someone helped me. Sometimes I think that we need someone to maybe knock some sense into us, shift our perspective a little bit. And thankfully, you know, I had my husband who loved me until I could love myself again. But I had this one doctor, the doctor that saved my leg. He really changed my life in so many ways. Not that he just saved my leg, but I remember, you know, there, there was, you know, I had this one doctor who, well, several doctors who were like, yep, you've got this nerve disease. And I kept going to another doctor saying, you know, that other doctor said I have this, this CRPS. There's no way I have that. And the last doctor was like, yes, you have this and you're going to, you need to go back and get in your wheelchair. You know, you'll be permanently disabled. You'll never work again. So, and I was like, that cannot be my life. But my leg was giving me so much pain that I actually went to my doctor who saved my leg, did 34 surgeries to save it. And I was like, hey, I really appreciate all you've done that you saved my leg, but it's just giving me too much pain and we need to go ahead and cut it off. Because the CRPS, it could make it spread. It could make it worse. It could go into another limb. And so it just wasn't the solution. And um, here I thought, oh, I've got the solution. We'll just amputate and I'll be on my way and I can right. keep going. And it really like shook me up when he was like, you can't do that. And then he put my leg in his lap. And my first thought was, oh, wow, he's putting my ugly deformed leg on his nice white coat. And he looked at it like it was a masterpiece. Like, wow, look at this. I saved this. This was 1% chance and I saved it. Yeah. Something shifted in me. And I thought, if he can look at my leg that way, maybe I can learn to do it too. Maybe I can learn to love myself again. And so from that day forward, I started thinking of my leg as not deformed and ugly and scarred but wow look how amazing it is that the human body can heal 
I looked at my scars, at the victories that I had overcome. I started thinking about just being so grateful that my leg could hold me up and that I could stand. And little by little, my, my life started to change. But I really think that that starts with taking radical acceptance, like really taking a good hard look at your life. So whatever's going on in your life, whether it is, you know, your, your job, your finances, your relationship, something that you're going through is to, to have acceptance. And when I did that, and that goes for my drinking too, you know, I was never a party or never a drinker. And then when I was trying all these procedures and uh, different medications and nothing was working for the pain is when I started to drink. And so were they giving you, they were giving you painkillers, but that, yeah, I've heard painkillers, they work differently for every, my wife gets nauseous when she takes them. She can't even take them. Um, oh my gosh. I was taking all kinds of, I was on 73 homeopathic pills a day and 11 different prescriptions and nothing was working. Wow. Like, Nothing was working. And so I remember when I took a drink and I thought, wow, this, why didn't they just tell me to have some wine every night? And I thought to myself, this isn't the healthiest thing, but if it's what I have to do to get through the day and to cope with it. Oh, and it is a slippery slope, you know, just a little, and then it becomes a little more and then a little more. And uh, yeah, my mom was a raging alcoholic. We have that in our, in our bloodline. Um, goes, goes back many, many family members. But, uh, right, I mean, I've, I've seen how easily, and fortunately for me, early on, I recognized that that was there. And so I, I, being aware of it was very helpful to me to see, like, oh, I'm starting to get a little bit too much into this partying, and, and especially, obviously, when I was younger now, I'm a dad of three, it's not quite that way. My but, goodness. yeah, you got you to gotta be aware, right? You got to be aware of the fact that this is happening, and if, if you're not, then looks like you, you went down that slippery slope and it started to get you a little bit. Oh my gosh. And it, you know, I was like uh, hiding it too. You know, I went and then there was so much shame around it. So it didn't just help cope with the pain. It, it helped push those feelings down and they eventually will all spring up and it worked until it didn't. And so you mentioned something earlier about, you know, that spark inside you and also asking yeah. for, and I think what really saved my life was having that little spark. It was a light inside me that was barely a flicker. And I prayed, I got on my knees and I prayed and I was like, God, I need help. What do I do? And I reached out, took so much courage, but I reached out to a former client of mine who I knew was sober. And I was like, Hey, I've got a problem and I need, some help. Good for like, you. Oh, well, I'll take you. I'll take you to a meeting. I'll take you to a recovery meeting. And and a week went by, and I didn't hear from her. And so I thought, no, I need help now. I'm going to die. I, and, and I was in a place where I was thinking about dying, and how my husband could find another wife. My maybe he could find another mom for them. And by the grace of God, that's where the uh, grit and grace comes from in my book and in my podcast. Um, I Googled recovery programs and I found the first meeting that I could go to where my husband was at work and my kids were at school. And I went from sneaking my drinking to sneaking, going to recovery meetings. And um, when I went to my first meeting, I, it was in California and I, I sat in between a nun and a cowgirl. And I thought, where the hell am I? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Okay, but if they can get sober, so can I. And in those rooms, I heard hope, and I just kept going back. And I think that, you know, being sober has given me my life back. I'm not saying it's easy. It was challenging during COVID. And, um, but I think that, you know, having that radical acceptance and asking for help. So listening, thank you all for tuning in. And I know your time is valuable, and I appreciate you. Whether you're tuning in now or you're watching a replay of this, ask for help like you don't have to do it alone and i will say you know sometimes the first person you ask may not be able to help you don't yeah. personally go help yourself right take the initiative and be willing to do what it takes to help yourself and that's something that i realized you know when doctors told me that i would be wheelchair bound forever i was like no i'm gonna walk but nobody was gonna do that for me i had to literally 
stand up seconds at a time because it was so painful and then stand up a little bit longer and eventually I could get out of the bed and use the bathroom on my own and then eventually I was walking around the block and I made it Starbucks on my crutches. Um, so one day at a time I've been able to, you know, stay sober. Um, but I had a slip up by the way, I, I lost my sobriety for one day. So I had about five and a half years of sobriety and I lost it for one day. And I share that only because I had a lot of shame around that. Yeah, no, good for you. But I, I'm not perfect. I'm no. from it and I screw up and I just try my best to get up and do the right thing and be a good person every single day. And I realized when I slipped, it was because number one, I had let some of my non-negotiables go, you know, like some of my morning rituals, my workout, some of the things help me keep uh, sober and healthy. My You're healthy, body. yeah. Yeah, your success habits. Yeah. Uh, so let me pause there for one second. I don't want to interrupt you because this is so great. Um, but a couple of things you said. Number one, you, I just want to point out, going back to that fixed victim versus growth owner, like, again, you kind of demonstrated, and it's so important, I think, for people to to understand how to go from that, that victim, fixed victim mentality to a growth owner. And one of the things that you were just talking about, which is that you just – you know, you're not perfect and you realize like, rather than feel this shame inside, you need to address it and say, okay, well, what's going on here? Why did this happen? And then just let the, you know, let people know versus keeping this dirty little secret. And, you know, I think as a, as fixed victims, we, 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 we want to be perfect. We think we need to be perfect. And, and in all fairness, that doesn't come from nowhere. That comes from a combination of there's nurture and nature. I won't go into it too much, but the gist is that there's this part of our, our society that, you know, just from, from an early age, we're constantly and more than ever now being bombarded with images of perfect people and, and what, you know, a, an ideal life should look like and, uh, you know, what success really means. And if we're not doing that, then we think, oh, I'm a failure. I'm a loser. There's something wrong with me. I'm broken, right? And it takes that growth owner mentality to sort of say, no, that's bullshit. Like I have everything within me and this was a mistake. It was a slip up. It was a failure. I'm going to fail forward. I'm going to use it to make me stronger. And there's going to be more failures. And there's going to be more obstacles. All I can do is take them one step at a time and know that I'm just going to keep moving. And so I want to commend you for doing that. And hopefully people listening you know, can sort of start to understand that difference between that victim and you that's, oh, poor me, I, you know, why does life always have to do these things to me and there's nothing I can do about it? And, oh, of course I, of course I, you know, this happened because life is out to get me. Like, no, that's, that's, life's not out to get you. Like things are going to happen to everybody, no matter who you are, even the biggest celebrities in the world and people that everybody like, admires and worships. I mean, look, what's, even just this year and social media and TV and all stuff, it's kind of, in a way, that's a double-edged sword where it's, in some ways it hurts, but in other ways it, it is helping expose, I feel like we're all human. Like Will Smith, Tom Brady and his marriage going on right now. I mean, there's a million things I can think of, of where people put on these airs and we all think they're perfect, but they're not. Everybody goes through the same shit we do. And it's about your mentality, your mindset to be able to get you through it. Yeah, it sure, it sure is. And, you know, and, and like you said, it's, it, it's not always easy because um, we see the highlight reels that every, and I mean, I, I post good things, but I also post the struggle. And that's actually why I even started my podcast was to share stories of struggles to success. Cause I think a lot of times on social media, it can look easy and it can look like, Oh, well they just, right. Oh, they've got it all figured out. And I'm like, I am just trying to figure it out as I go along, you know, and, and do the best one day at a time. And, um, yeah. And so I think that's, that's part of it. Just being willing to, um, show up and learn and grow every day. And I, and I love it. I love learning and growing. And, and I love that, you know, I used to think that I had to do it all by myself and I learned that that just didn't work for me. And I don't want to do it. I don't think we're meant to do things alone. I don't think we're meant to do hard things alone, especially. And I like what you shared about the shame. And I think when we shine a light on shame, it diminishes. Yeah, totally. 
Totally. Cause there's, then it's like, Oh, it's out there. And, Cause we have this fear of like, Oh my God, everybody's going to think I'm this or that, but it's, it's totally unfounded. Right. And so what you're doing is you're basically just kind of bitch slapping for your fear. That's sorry. That's an inappropriate word. You are giving fear the finger. There's one. <laughs> we'll use that. Uh, but really just being like, you do not, you're nothing. You are nothing. Like I'm going to shine a light on you and expose you for what you are, which is just a little stinky, annoying thing that's trying to ruin my life. And I ain't going to let you do it. Well, and it's the lowest uh, vibrational energy is shame. And then you kind of start to step up and you get to this place of acceptance, which is somewhere in the middle and the very top is joy. And yeah. I, you know, when we can just be in acceptance and have awareness for maybe what we're doing, everything's for us or against us. And I mean, everything, everything we do, whether it's food we eat versus the people we eat around, the stuff we consume, not just on social media, but on TV, the news, all of yeah. that, um, it all affects us. Totally. Um, so we'll take a quick question. The Honest Mom podcast asks, what's the difference between a person who can't get out of it and a person that does? This is, she'd asked this a little while ago when we were talking about, you know, going from that, um, being stuck in that sort of victim, poor me, there's nothing I can do about it to, all right. And, and so we kind of talked, she, I don't know um, where you came in Honest Mom podcast, but we, we did talk a little bit about that spark. And, and you were saying, I think that your spark came right when you started drinking and then it just hit you it really you kind of hit your rock bottom at that time was that for you when it was like okay it's it's fight or flight here like we got to go and something just in you just pushed or what do you tell well, talk about that i was in a place where i didn't really want to live but i was too afraid to die and then i really thought about my kids and i thought well i want to be an example of really resilience for them not i don't want to be an example of the victim i want to be the victor of my yeah. life and so i thought you know i need help. i need to help and so um i think what's really helped me is i have a, a very strong connection to god whether people want to say their higher power maybe um you know sometimes people get a little freaked out with the word god but God, uh, I had to believe in something bigger than me. I thought sure. I could this by myself. I think it's important to surround yourself with people who believe in you and encourage you. Totally. I, I think that it really starts with your mindset. And the key is, look, I, people think I'm motivated or positive all the time, and I'm not. I mean, it only says... Amberly Lago Motivation, because my daughter had started an Instagram for me years ago and used my name, so I couldn't get that. So I'm like, okay, well, then we'll just put Amberly Lago Motivation. But um, I'm not always motivated. In fact, I wake up, and I'm hurting, and I'm in a bad mood. I mean, because I get out of bed, and the minute my feet hit the ground, I immediately feel pain because it's CRPS. But I've learned to shift my mindset to what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that I can get out of bed because for a long time, I could not get out of bed. I couldn't walk to even go to the bathroom on my own. So I shift it to what I can do. And I think that gratitude is the quickest and easiest way to shift your perspective. It really allows yeah. you to focus on what you do have instead of what you don't have and what you can do. And so often, We'll get something negative and dang it, that note, that negative comment or something that happened wants to stick like Velcro. And I have to really consciously force myself to focus on well, what good happened. I mean, it goes for, for anything. You know, here I had this fabulous mastermind event and, and it was amazing. The most incredible women ever. And there was one like little slip up with the hotel. Nobody else even noticed it, but I did. And I was getting so hung up on that. I'm like, Amberly, stop it. Yeah, right. Like, this was incredible. Like, focus on the good. Focus on all these amazing connections and all the ideas that were sparked and the clarity gained and the transformation, right. you know. And so I think so much is our mindset and we can start to 
you know, um, I interviewed John Acoff. On, I don't know. Do you know who John Acoff is? Yeah, I have, yes, I've heard that name, but remind me. I know the name. So funny, too. He's got a book called Soundtracks, and I interviewed him on my podcast. And he says, you know, we start to create this constant loop, this thought in our head that becomes this playlist that, and it either empowers us or disempowers right. us. I feel like we have the ability to kind of turn down the volume on that soundtrack if it's a negative one and up the volume either through affirmations, through connecting with someone, through praying. But I consciously shift those negative thoughts into something positive with gratitude. Oh, I love it. So I always like to take lessons that are you know that come up in these 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 podcasts and give the viewers and listeners like you said earlier whether you're listening now or you're listening to a repeat of this a tangible action and and sort of i call it gamifying your life uh, something you can take right now and kind of trick your brain into doing what you just said so what if you don't mind i'd like to share kind of how i what i use for exactly what you just said because I think it's tough for people. I think everybody's different and everybody kind of has to find that their way that they're able to do that. Right. Like, so like when you say stuff like, um, you know, the grat, like you got to have the grat, you know, the gratitude is what does that. And you need to find a way to, you know, realize I'm being ridiculous. I think it's, what's really difficult for most people is catching themselves in the moment. Right. Uh, you know, you may catch yourself like, a, a day later and be like, Oh, that was silly. I did that. But it's already kind of too late in a way because you'd already stewed and gotten into that, you know, negative mindset and we're in a bad mood and whatever negative else stuff you paid it forward to other people with. I use this little, this acronym that I came up with and it, it's like magic for me. And I wish somebody had taught me this when I was very young. I too was, I was suicidal when I was younger. I had, I've got my own tragic story just like you do. Um, but it's called CBRP. Okay, and it stands for catch, breathe, remind and reflect and pivot. Okay, and I'll go through them very, very quickly for people so that they can potentially use it. So the it. catch is catch the thought like, okay, this, what are we doing here? Like, this is not us. Like, why are we, th this thought is, and, and you mentioned earlier, this gentleman who said, you know, there's this constant track going on in our head and it's either going to empower us or hurt us right and so this this is one if, if a negative thought comes in that's trying to take us down you say okay ah, ah, no okay and then you breathe this really helps I, my whole life people have been telling me to breathe and i'm like what do you breathe i breathe every day what are you talking about like taking a deep breath and just like just really stopping to like and then exhale it just it just it takes you out of whatever's going on at the moment and it doesn't allow your little brain to just keep running on whatever track it's on that's on the wrong track. And, and then you the take sympathetic system. the what it calms. It's a way that you can calm your sympathetic nervous system. Yes, that's exactly right. And you're everything, your body, you were as you're doing that, you think my, of relax, like shoulders just completely going limp and just everything's just calm. And in the state where now you're ready to take, to the next step, which is remind and reflect. Gratitude's part of this. It's like, why am I getting so worked up about this right now? And reminding yourself how great you actually have it and how awesome your life really is. And just going through that punch list of the things that you have going for you and are awesome in your life. And that just makes it almost impossible for that thought to, to, to want to keep going, but it's still there. And so then my last, my last step is the pivot. And this is my favorite because then you're actually, and, and if you can ideally pivot into a positive action or something that, you know, is going to make you feel good or empowered or, you know, whatever word you want to use, but that's, you know, taking you away from whatever that thought you were having. And now you're doing something that's making you feel good. That's, that, that's taking you ABG, moving you forward. Now you're growing, you're living life, you're happy. Right. And then so combine, but so those are based CBRP. You're combining those little, little tricks. And you, by the end of it, your brain is redirect. You've, you've focused, uh, you, you've calmed yourself. You've redirected your brain to remember what's important in the gratitude stuff and said, okay, this is ridiculous. What am I doing? You're literally then going 
and putting action in, and you're switching your brain into something else and it just cuts it. And it's not easy and you're not, so go try this today. You know, I, what I did is the very first, I've gotten in the habit of it now. It's become a success habit for me and it's changed my life. But I, you know, for me, everybody's different. I put a little thing on my computer that said CBRP just to remind me for a while. Cause you know, you, even CBRP, it's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. I should use it. But your brain's not going to naturally go to it, but you just want to keep repeating it. And I had it in my phone every morning and I had it at night. Like just a little reminder, just literally said CBRP. So that it just kept coming up over and over. And then slowly but surely, I did start using it. And it just really made the difference between taking me from that fixed victim to the growth owner. I love that. I wrote that down. I love it so much. You know, I actually have an acronym, too, that reminds me um, when I'm feeling depressed or when I'm feeling anxious or when I'm feeling imposter syndrome or if I'm feeling tired or if I'm just not brilliant, I have something called PACER and it stands for perspective, acceptance, community, endurance, and rest. And so I, in the moment, think of how can I shift like you did the remind and reflect. I like that. My perspective is like, how can I shift my perspective? And, you know, just like yesterday, I had a situation where something, a very difficult conversation that I had to have, and I'm an overcoming people pleaser, and it really was hard to have to um, talk to this person about this situation, and it was getting me kind of down in a funk, and then I thought, holy crap, Amberly, like you said, remind and reflect. I just found out, like, I am cancer-free. Like, I got yeah. through the medical procedure. Right. Like, I am grateful. And, and when I say practice gratitude, I mean, I actually practice it. I have a group of ladies. We call ourselves the God Squad, and we write each other every single day 10 things for That's people. awesome. That's amazing. So, that, that's so great. You feel it. You share it. You see what they're grateful for. Sometimes mm -hmm. that'll shift your perspective, seeing what they're overcoming and they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, the A in PACER is for acceptance, which we've already talked about taking that radical acceptance and being aware. And the, yeah. first, uh, the C for community, I, you know, having an incredible group of women that I get to mastermind with, I myself invest in other masterminds, like not having to do it alone. You know, I have a group of friends. We talk about podcasting. I have another group of ladies. We call ourselves the legendary ladies. And we, you know, they're high level, high performance entrepreneurs. So I think that when you have that community, whether it's in your church or my daughter has her, she's a horseback rider. She's got her horse crazy girls. I know that's so important to me. And when we first moved to Dallas, that was the first thing I did was like, okay, I need to find a barn for my daughter. I need to find a church for me. I need to find some, a networking group. Um, and the E is for endurance and dang, it takes endurance, especially as an entrepreneur. And I think Love that's it. where we have to remember our why we don't get burnt out from what we're doing. We get burnt out when we forget why yeah. we're doing what we're doing. I agree. And then the last part is rest, which is the hardest thing for me. Like, I love what I do, so I can, I love to go fast. Um, but I found that if you really want to be resilient, then you have to strategically plan times in your day to recover and rest. Yeah. I think you're wearing, are you wearing one of these rings? Uh, well, mine's just my no. wedding ring. This oh. is my, uh, my, my platinum. Well, what do you have? It's called the Aura. I mean, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I just love it because I, I really started making rest a part of my business strategy. Like I was, mm -hmm. I am going to make sure I rest so I can show up fully giving, you know, a thousand percent energy. And it's been a game changer, you know, to really get in that, to set my day up for success is to, nice. and and you know what? I mean, I hope that pacer helps, you know, if, if you're struggling or you're feeling stuck to use that pacer. But I even write down, like I'm old school. I have like a big paper calendar. Uh, I'm a huge note taker. I love it. Yep. I have mark out times. This is when I'm working out and I will highlight it in different colors. If I don't, I will fill that time slot up with something 
else. And so I think that that self-care is so important um, for preventing burnout. I love it. And so, right. And I want to point out something. So you've got Pacer, which thank you for sharing that and walking people through that. CBRP is what I use. This reminds me of, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but the gist is as to methods, there are millions, but as, as, as to principles, there are only a few. And basically the gist of that is we're saying the exact same thing. And again, earlier I mentioned how we're all individual and unique human beings and our minds work differently. And so something's going to click with one person isn't going to click with another. So if, you know, maybe try both and see what clicks. And, and, and like, I think you were talking at one point and you mentioned how somebody said something and it made you, it took you out of like the perspective part of it when you were talking like, what am I, I'm cancer free. Like, what am I getting so worked up about? Right. And so it's, it's about finding that whatever that is, that magical and feel free to tweak and rework and both of ours, right? If you're listening to this, but make it so that like it clicks in your brain. And when you read it and when you are reminded, like, you're like, yes, like this is it. And your brain connects to it. And that's, it's working for you. Um, that's what I was able to do with my, I wish my, I wish my acronym sounded a little better. Cause like pacer, that's awesome. Like that's a word, like pacer, like a runner pacer, set the pace. Do you CDRP know means nothing. <laughs> you know why I, I came up with Pacer is because one night at dinner, I was sitting at the dinner table and, you know, my leg was throbbing. I had it propped up on the dinner table. My daughter had her homework paper scattered everywhere. We had to go food there. And my husband looked at me and I guess I looked really tired or in pain. And he goes, you know, you really need to pace yourself. And I was like, ah, I am pacing myself. <laughs> this is what I do. And I grabbed a dinner napkin and I started writing everything that I do that does allow me to, you know, enjoy life and build on the joy. I mean, there are a lot of people that, that unfortunately, one of my really good friends who has CRPS is having another surgery. And there's a lot of people that they, they can't get out of a wheelchair and my heart goes out to them. And you know, my little brother's been in a wheelchair his whole life. There's nothing against, I don't have anything against it. I just thought that's not the life for me. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't envision, envision that for me. Um, and uh, I, I wrote down all the things that I do to get through the day while living with this pain. And at first I was just going to call it pace. But then I realized over and over again, after about the sixth time to the, ER because of infections in my leg that I needed to add the R for rest and call it pacer instead of pain. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I, thank you for sharing how you came up with that too. That's, that's really cool. Um, well, listen, this has been awesome. Normally I actually do between 30 and 45 minutes. We're, we're at a full 45. So that means that this was a great interview and I'm sure I feel like you and I could probably talk for hours and hours and hours. Uh, oh. You're the type of person. I love, I love your vibe, your energy. And again, growth, growth owner mindsets. Let's go people. If anything, you take a lesson out of today, look at, look, look at this lady right here and look what she's been able to do with the growth owner mindset. Cause literally it's the sky's the limit when you have that and versus the opposite when you're a fixed victim, you, you're not giving yourself any chance to succeed to take off into that bright, bold, beautiful sky. So thank you, Emily, so much. Thank oh, you, thank you, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, fantastic. thank you so much. And this is just the beginning of, I'm sure, amazing things that we're going to be able to do together and make some magic. And I just want to say thanks, everybody, for taking the time. And thank you so much. Yes, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. That's it for the Five Core Life. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button on this video and pound that subscribe button so you get notified when new episodes drop. Also, please fill out the free five core life evaluator quiz. It's a great way to get a baseline of where you are and the five cores and which of the five cores you need support. In addition, you'll get some actionable advice that you can apply and start improving your life in the areas that you need it most. That's it for today's episode of the five core life podcast. Have a wonderful day. Get moving, gain momentum, join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five course.